Alto from Madrona Labs is a great example of merging the best of analog and digital. It uses a sound engine based on the analog synthesizer designs of Don Buchla. It also uses some of the paradigms from the physical world quite nicely. It has a really nice interface and is very clear for how to patch things and modulate uh, from module to module. The other great thing about Alto is that it's polyphonic and it does MIDI polyphonic expression. So let's take a look at how to set up MPE, how to patch the gestures from an MPE controller into Alto, and how we can adapt some non-MPE patches into the MPE world. So when you first add Alto to your set, the great thing is that the name makes it very easy to find. It's always going to be your first plugin. And you'll want to go up to the top right menu and there's a few little switches in here. You'll want to go select input protocol MIDI MPE. And when you do that, you'll notice that the key uh, modulation sources change from the like CC level things to things that are useful for MPE. So here we can start patching. This is the default preset when you first load Alto. And it's a very simple tone. Um, so let's try to add some simple MPE attachments. All that's done patching from these uh, keyboard modifiers. So you can attach velocity to, um, say for example, the resonance on the filter. And it's nicely animated so you can see the multiple voices changing the cue as we hit the velocities at different levels. Uh, velocity can be automatically applied to an envelope simply with this switch, so you don't need to patch anything. And the voice number you can use to patch to, uh, for example, pan, I really like that. So you can use these little dials to say how much of the modulation amount you want. Pan, you always need to sort of shift it over when you're applying um, and now we can space out each voice. So as I add a note to the chord, it pan pans from left to right. Uh, we can take aftertouch. Aftertouch, let's do something simple. And we'll just make that to level. Then we can take the mod wheel. I'm not using that, uh, so I'll ignore that. And then we can take the X. We'll cover that because right now X is going to pitch bend and we can modulate that amount using the bend amount here. And then finally the Y for what is commonly used you know, as a timbre control. Why don't we just map that to a thing called timbre? <laughs> And now we have patched up from the default an MPE patch. So that's the most basic operation. Obviously, there are a lot of patch points. The complex oscillator is capable of making a lot of different sounds. And then, of course, your sound treatments in your, low, in your gate um, and your waveguide delay and your filters can all be patched up. Additionally, you can modify your modulators by um, patching into those. So let's take a look at a more, some more complex examples. Um, Randy Jones of Madrona Labs was kind enough to make several presets for the morph, and we can take a listen to some of those. Um, they really take great advantage of the tactility. Uh, Randy's quite an expert in this, so he did a really wonderful job. I really appreciate the, the use of pressure in these. They really give it a nice feeling. And then as we go up, really adds a nice complexity using the um, 
some of the FM and the timbre controls. And we can take a look at how some of this is patched up just by sort of dragging over the patch cords from Aftertouch. We can see those are going to the noise and of course the level and the feedback. So you get not only uh, just volume adjustment, but some timbral as I push down. And for the Y, we can uh, see that's going to the modulation index. And so that's why we hear that, real, that frequency modulation really start to shine when we go up and down. So that's a couple nice examples of using uh, timbre and expression in MPE. I also really like some of these uh, sync presets, and these use the sequencer. Um, and so in this case, we have the sync bonco pressure. So there's really kind of a nice chaos that ensues with uh, pressure. And you can see that's going to the speed of the sequencer and uh, as well as the low pass uh, filter. Another preset I like is Plush Lobby, which is kind of a, a David Lynch almost uh, image. And the sound is, is quite appropriate for that too. Now, what I really appreciate about this is uh, the use of the sequencer in sort of an unusual way. Um, you can see we have the Y value at attached to the offset. And so that's just sort of moving the offset point of the sequencer and there's just selecting four steps. So as we press one, and we're sort of moving through that sequence. And it triggers every time we move, so you get this glitchiness. Really uh, wonderful and imaginative use of uh, the sequencer there. And of course, you can do things like uh, map the pressure to the speed, too. So then we can do sort of both things and this is using the the internal clock and so again there's lots of uh, possibility for designing interesting sounds uh, even though it's in a relatively simple sort of two oscillator synthesizer and another example we can take a look at one of the standard percussion presets called Deep Bongo. And it's just kind of a nice percussive sound, but I wanted to give it some more variety depending on how and where you played it. So I came up with um, this preset, which really just kind of offers some more modulation from my fingers. So after touch goes to noise. and also affects the feedback on the waveguide. And then the Y position affects the filter cutoff and the type going from low to a little bit more of a bandpass. So you can play it in a variety of ways. You can play it percussively. But it has sustain in the envelope, so. You can kind of move around and get different sounds out of it. And there's also a little bit of a, a sequence glitch to it. And so that's playing it with this drum pad. Um, if we introduce the piano pad, 
because it's just naturally playing at a higher higher frequency, higher note values, it actually takes on a very different character. If we want to use the X, and this is kind of an undocumented thing, much like in Serum, uh, in order to use X, you need to remap it to CC10. In this case, it needs to be done to uh, CC73. So we can open the Sensel map, and I'll go ahead and use the uh, Buchla overlay in, the, in this case. And we will select uh, preset one, and I will go ahead and select all, and then use command or control click to deselect the ones I don't want. And I'll just quickly remap the X to CC73. And we can start using X. In this case, X is mapped to the input of the waveguide. And we can see the animation of that input. So now we can do that polyphonically for a lot of different things. We might want to make that uh, affect the cutoff. And we can bring those down. And we could even start to map the aftertouch to, say, the resonance of it. So that's how you get the X parameter involved and then patch it to things that you're enjoying. Another great use is, of course, pan, because then you can pan each note individually. So I'll go ahead and just kind of bump up the filter so we're not using that. And we could even get the sequencer involved. And if we go ahead and sync that to the host, we'll just hit the question mark here and trigger on a few steps here. So already there's some very uh, interesting sound designs that really are evocative of things that are otherworldly. So that's some of the complexity and simplicity that you can get with Alto from Madrona Labs. It's one of our favorites. Uh, we love the sounds. We love the uh, place it's coming from. So hopefully you get a chance to take a look at Alto and try some of your own designs.